Hi, I'm Susan Lloyd. And I'm Kim Ward. That would make me Keith Ghostland. And welcome to All Things LGBTQ. We are taping on Tuesday, January 23rd. All Things LGBTQ is taped at Orca Media in Montpelier, Vermont, that we recognize as being unceded indigenous land. And a quick shout out to Ann and Linda and hope that they're enjoying California. We're not jealous. No. <laughs> We're not bitter, no. We're not bitter, <laughs> never. Thank you, Keith. Uh, so, speaking of bitter. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, jump right into I'm it. I'm going to jump right into it. West Virginia has a bill that will label trans people as obscene in a horrific development barely three weeks into the new year, a Republican lawmaker in West Virginia has introduced a bill that, if signed into law, would ban transgender exposure, experiences, or displays to minors, effectively prohibiting transgender people from countless public spaces in the state. The bill blatantly portrays the existence of transgender people as dangerous and fuels our ongoing state of emergency that we're continuing to sound the alarm on. There's a couple of other articles uh, uh, from Washington as well that, uh, for example, the Missouri General Assembly has been, has slated to discuss eight transgender bills from regulations barring discrimination against health providers who refuse to perform gender affirming care to an exclusionary bathroom bill. And 17 days into this new year, lawmakers in Congress and state houses across the country are considering more than 275 yeah. anti-trans bills, according to the Trans Legislative Tracker and the ACLU. The result of all of this is, of course, a crisis for millions of LGBTQ plus people, many of whom have been forced to flee their home states to access basic civil liberties. The 2024 attacks on freedom are already accelerating. MAGA politicians are already doubling down on the agenda to strip transgender people of life-saving care, banning books, censoring curriculum, and wielding state statutes as a weapon against people's freedom to exist as their authentic selves. And there's, uh, there's a lot of different bills on young people and when they can actually apply for affirming care. There was some good news. <laughs> there was a huge... Um, debate around drag bans, the LGBT community and allies continued to show up, uh, in dr many dressed in drag at the end of the nights. And there was a woman who said that in Missouri, a lot of these attacks didn't actually wear work in the 22 and 23 midterm elections. Most of the people that ran on those anti-trans campaigns actually lost their seats. So uh, while people aren't specifically running on this issue, um, many people who opposed the trans anti-trans legislation actually ended up winning their race. So the truth is that LGBTQ plus people have been in this situation before with even fewer allies and fewer resources, and uh, they believe that they, will, they won then and they will win again now. Something a little happier. Okay. Uh, J-Lo, Jennifer oh. Lopez made an appearance at a West Hollywood gay club called The Abbey over the weekend thrilling fans and stunning a drag performer who was on stage dressed up as, as J-Lo singing. Uh, and, she, and the drag artist, Joe Lopez, had just finished performing a, a number to the singer's new single, Can't Get Enough, when J-Lo walked onto, stage, uh, onto oh, the stage it. and surprised one of her biggest fans. She snuck onto the stage, draped in a full-length fur coat and was greeted by cheers from the crowd and a <laughs> stunned scream from the drag impersonator. <laughs> I love that. OK, more fun. I love this. A UK woman shared her decision to engage in the growing trend of platonic co-parenting with her gay best friend. I love this. Nice. The decision felt natural for Nicola Slauson, who considered having a baby on her own in the mid-30s, but was worried about the financial burden. And she, I love this. She said, many people throw themselves into dating, but I hated the idea of hunting for a man just to have a baby with him. <laughs> nice. It felt really forced, and I heard too many horror stories of women settling and feeling deeply resentful if they broke up, having to co-parent their children with someone they really wished wasn't the father. <laughs> Okay. So she heard about platonic co-parenting and after extensive thought decided to work up the courage to ask her single gay best friend 
Tom Hayes, if he would be interested in taking the plunge. To her surprise, he was excited about it from the start. After much research, discussion, and contemplation, they decided to go for it. They like to joke that no baby has ever been discussed as much or considered so much in advance. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So both of their parents are on board and have been supportive. And uh, this is, uh, they can't believe this is really happening. And she's due in the spring. So nice. that's exciting. We have a strong history here in Vermont of platonic parents. Yeah. Joint adoption. I love that. And, and it's never been contested. It's never been challenged. I love that. But, yeah. So other things, uh, the GLAD Awards are coming out, the GLAD Media Awards to honor media for fair, accurate, and inclusive representations of LGBTQ people and issues. There's a whole long list that I'll spare you of uh, things that are in the running, but it may are be. Are we nominated? We are definitely up there, oh. yes, definitely. It will be in the, uh, at the Beverly. Oh, they're going to have two ceremonies at, in Los Angeles at the Beverly Hilton on Thursday, March 14th, and in New York City yep. at the Hilton Midtown. And then, uh, what else? Speaking to an enthusiastic crowd inside San Diego's Air and Space Museum in Balboa Park, Democratic State Senator Tony Atkins, the outgoing president pro tempore of the state senate, and now she's running uh, for governor. She's an out lesbian lawmaker. She's entering into a crowded race against fellow Democrats and, of course, those other people that we won't talk about. <laughs> Uh, what else? The National uh, LGBTQ Task Force on Tuesday called for a ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. Uh, they are quite adamant that the roots of this conflict are based in fascism, white supremacy, and colonialism, and the collective trauma experienced by these oppressive measures keeps us from moving all towards liberation. Uh, I think, Keith, you and I were talking about this a little bit earlier. In a historic move, Bobby Brooke Arnold, a transgender female, has been approved to be placed yep. on the ballot as a candidate representing West Alexandria in her chosen name and gender identity, despite the strong Republican majority and conservative stance on these issues. And so she, she went through a lot to, to get to this point. She's been... Um, started transitioning nine years ago, and part of that was her name. There was an old statute that you had to use your dead name or show evidence of what your current name was. And uh, it says that democracy thrives when it reflects the diversity of our community. So it's a big move forward to be able to be on the ballot in such a conservative area. And then one more real quick. Yep. Um, <clears throat> South Carolina, Charleston, activists from a South Carolina chapter of Moms for Liberty a group best known for opposing LGBTQ rights, are pushing for the removal of library books, fighting racially inclusive curriculum, and now they're starting their own charter school. The new school will be fully taxpayer funded, funded but is structured in a way that avoids any state oversight. I like that. They get the money, but they don't, they're not held accountable. Gonna find out There's a curriculum <laughs> they call the, ironically, 1776 curriculum which you would think would be liberty and freedom, but actually uh, religious nut jobs is really what it is. Um, the first head of the school, the person they want to head the school, uh, got a, a grade of an F from the last school that he was the headmaster oh, at. Man. They have, they, his school failed in math. 23% uh, people passed their math standardized test and only 12% passed in science. So Yikes. this school is not a political project, the new headmaster said. We're just trying to provide the best education. <laughs> Over to you, Kim. <laughs> I don't know if I can read now. Uh, what? <laughs> So in a continuation of, not, of good news this week, uh, this past week has been filled with a lot of good news from countries around the globe. I seem to have a handful of things from, of all places, a couple of them are from the church tonight, mm. uh, as well as some Vietnamese soccer. I've got, of course, as usual, a new term to share with people, new to me. Mm. So uh, in terms of from the rainbow itself. Uh -huh. So we'll see. So I'm going to start with, uh, first up, Pope Francis recently announced that priests can now bless same-sex couples. You're going to say right. announced he was gay. He was gay. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be great? No, I've so, seen the outfits. It's not that far. Come on. It's yeah. not a stretch. I mean, it, yeah, they do wear dresses. So Pope Francis has announced that priests can now bless same-sex right. couples, though right. they still will not be allowed to be married in the Catholic Church. Vatican statement still made it clear that marriage is exclusively, exclusively between a man and a woman. Um, they announced it in the New York Times, a rare and important type of 
Vatican document on Monday. It elaborates on the October letter the Pope issued in which he responded to five conservative cardinals who asked him whether or not he would permit priests to bless same-sex unions. At the time, he wrote that while the church only recognizes marriages between a man and a woman, Catholic priests could consider same-sex couples for blessings on a case-by-case -case basis. The most recent declaration from the Vatican maintains that the church remains firm, quote unquote, on the traditional doctrine of the church about marriage. While same-sex unions are now eligible for blessings, the declaration stresses that these blessings are not equivalent to marriage and should not be confused with any kind of liturgical right. So that's kind of an interesting step. I feel like he's trying to baby step them towards some things, but maybe not. These blessings can be imparted upon those who recognize themselves to be destitute and in need of God's help, according to the declaration. Interesting. Uh, so what does he actually think about queer trans people? He established himself as one of the most boundary pushing popes the church has ever had when he came in. Um, and there are several stances he's held. Um, he's widely understood to be one of the most progressive popes to hold the position, and in recent months he has taken steps to provide LGBTQ plus people with increased access to the church. He has said that trans people can be baptized and become godparents if doing so does not pose a scandal risk. I don't know what that means. He also ate lunch with trans women at the Vatican uh, for the church's World Day of the Poor and revoked a retired anti-LGBTQ plus cardinal's access to a Vatican apartment and salary because the Cardinal had become a right. source of disunity. So there's some mixed messaging going on, obviously, by challenging the pontiff's softening of the church's LGBTQ stance. So he's, that's not mixed message, I apologize. So he revoked this Cardinal's access for challenging what he's doing. That being said, the Irish state minister, Jack Chambers, has become, has come out as gay in an Instagram post. Yes, mm -hmm. he did. Um, he said, uh, as I look forward to 2024, I'm sharing with you something a little different, but it's something I wanted to do for a while. As a politician, it can sometimes be difficult um, life, and that can lead to things drifting. However, it's important for me to be true to myself firstly and to you all in my public service role, starting out 2024 by telling you I'm gay. So good for him. Um, Road trip. Road trip. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and the prime minister in Ireland is yeah. gay as well. Yeah. yeah. So um, kudos to them. The Greek prime minister, Kyriakos uh, Mitsotakis, should be gay. Say that three times, so said that a bill to legalize same sex marriage will be moving forward in parliament in the next few months. Mm. So that's kind of cool. See, we're taking notes of where we could yeah, visit. Great. Road trip. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, that would be an ocean trip. Mm -hmm. Greece's center right uh, government will soon submit legislation on allowing same sex marriage, despite reservations from its lawmakers on the country's influential and the country's influential Orthodox Church. So he stressed that the proposal pro, proposed law would not extend the right to parenthood through surrogate mothers to same-sex couples, an issue that has divided Greek society. What we are going to legislate is equality in marriage, Mitsotakis said. We will remove any discrimination concerning sexual orientation in the issue of marital relationship. But, he added, we won't change the law on assisted parenthood. The idea of women who are turned into child-producing machines on demand, that is not going to happen. It's a little extreme. Several lawmakers from the right wing of the governing New, Democrat, De New Democracy Party have expressed opposition to any overhaul of Greece's marriage and parenthood laws to include same-sex couples. So Mitsotakis said in Wednesday's interview with state-run ERT television that he would not force them to back the proposed legislation seeking cross-party support to get it approved. I will be leave, I believe I will be able to secure the bill's approval. Some people will benefit considerably in the sense that we will solve a real problem for them. Some people may disagree with the law, but they do not stand to lose, which I think is a valid point. Um, also, in Vietnam, a female soccer player became the first female sports player in the country to mar marry a partner of the same sex. Um, although this marriage was only symbolic, it is notable first. It's a notable first for the country as they continue to take more steps towards equality. So this is the first weekend of 2024. Saw 33-year-old defender Tron Tia Tu, um, who played for her country in the 2023 FIFA World Women's Cup, marry her partner Nua T. Tuong. FIFA. <laughs> FIFA. <laughs> yeah, there we are. So uh, Nua T. 
Tuong, and they were in Ho Chi Minh City. So how good is that? VN Express International reports that this is the first time a female Vietnamese football player has publicly married a same-sex se partner, um, although they don't recognize it in Vietnam right now. It is a symbolic public event, so kudos to them for doing that. Best wishes to us. The wedding was a great success, they said. So Vietnam's success, success of reaching the World Cup for the first time when they qualified in 2023 was overshadowed when they lost the match they had played. But there's a wedding involved, so that's Yes. Right. Happy ending. All right, so that's what I have so far. We like happy endings. Yeah. We do. That's all I've got. Oh, okay. So what I have to start with is trivia, and they were so close. <sighs> yeah, almost there. <laughs> Out in the mountains... January 1996, this was the front page feature article, and it was about the Queer Town Meeting 3. And the bulk of the article was talking about the keynote speaker, who was Keith St. John, who holds a unique position within LGBTQ plus history. And I, as I continue to talk, as Coleman plays <laughs> with the camera, what is that unique place in our history? And they were almost there. So looking at events, and we keep promoting this, typewriters, dollhouses, dogs, descendants. This is Diane Fitch's paintings and drawings that are at the Gallery Highland Center for the Arts in Greensboro. Mm -hmm. And it is running through February 11th, and we will continue to promote it until the exhibit has closed. So, and there will be a poster that will come up and you can appreciate you know, the work that's gonna be on display. <laughs> Rainbow Umbrella, the women's discussion group continues, the book discussion groups. You can go onto the Facebook page to get details and find out what the book is. Fox Market in East Montpelier. You came to mind. <laughs> well, wait till you hear. Friday, February 9th at 7 p.m. Do you know this? Erotic uh, poetry. Yes, I do. Yes. Anonymous dirty love notes I came written by you on site. Yes. Uh, Aren't we all going? Let's there. go. Wow. And, and then on I Saturday. I thought you were going to say speed dating. No. <laughs> well, thanks. No, that's, no that's, our, that's our history. We don't talk about that in the public. <laughs> Sorry. So, I, but also on Saturday, February twenty fourth, starting at seven p.m. is Queer Poetry Night. Queer Poetry Night, and mm. which we've been doing at, regularly at Fox Market. It looks fantastic. as though every month. It's every month. But, yeah, Rabbit and Wolf is running those. Yep. Which is, it's just a, phena a phenomenal space to read poetry, and it's and it's queer poetry with no judgment. It's a lovely space. Right. I'm outright in Vermont, and I wanted to put a plug in. Um, and I'm going out on a limb, but if there's one queer organization to really support right now, it's outright looking at how our youth mm -hmm. and looking at and stories that I'll have coming up are mm -hmm. targeted. So, mm. but a, a reminder: Friday night group here in Montpelier, February 9th, 6:30 p.m. at the UU Church, and they're meeting on the second Friday of each month. Mm. So keep that in mind. There is still an every Friday night virtual group that you can go online, and mm -hmm. it's at 6.30. Mm. There is still an in-person Friday night group in Burlington each Friday, starting at 6.30 at the Outright office. And then I, you know, Morrisville, third Friday of each month, 6.30 p.m. at the Clarina Howard Nichols Center. That's huge. Doing good work. Mm -hmm. Out in the 802... On Sunday, February 2nd, they're doing their potluck brunch. You can go on to their Facebook page or website to get details. I'm told the food is very good. Mm. And then if it's Thursday night, out in the 802 is sponsoring a happy hour somewhere. That's right. Hmm. Burlington, St. Johnsbury, St. Albans. And, and we thank them. The, the one in Burlington is fun because it's at Lincoln's, mm -hmm. where it's literally like an old speakeasy. You have to knock on the door to get let in. I love that. So, 
So I'm I'm letting you go again, and I'm Thank I'm hoping I'm hoping you have at least one good story in this segment. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Because that'll make up for some of the things I'm not that I'm starting be with it, about. so don't put too much pressure. But my <laughs> final story is is I hope is uplifting. Um, well, first of all, DeSantis dropped out of the race. That's huge, right? Can we just all pause for a moment and, and celebrate that? Or are we now like, I mean, oh, he dropped, no, because... He dropped out, but he supported Trump. Yeah, I know. Well, but yes, it's yes. good that he dropped out. But the results of a new poll released Sunday showed a shocking number of registered voters actually agree with former President Donald Trump's channeling Nazi dictator Adolf Hitler and his... Immigrants are poisoning the blood speech. Did we hear about this? Mm -hmm. yes. Rant he delivered last month at a rally in Durham, New Hampshire. 53% of the voters disagreed, but 47% agreed. That's messed up, people. Uh, so in other news, human rights campaign president Kelly Robinson addressed the rise in political violence and threats targeting LGBTQ and other marginalized communities during a speech at Charles Kettering Foundation's conference in DC. And uh, what I liked about this is she said there's there's threats in front of us and trying to get us to back away, go back into the closet, and our answer is, hell no! Progress is happening. And then she said just a couple generations ago, um, 40 years ago, you could be fired for being out at work. If you contracted HIV or AIDS, it was a death sentence, took out a generation of gay men. The idea of marrying the person you loved was a dream, let alone planning for it and having a reality show that follows you around while doing it. I love that. Great In conclusion, she said there are two powerfully important things that we can do together starting today that can make change. One, lean into the hard work and conversations because democracy has always meant being at the table with people you disagree with, and therefore it's necessary to humanize the fight for progress by being unapologetically visible. And two, use your political power, Robinson said. Speak out boldly in public. Use your relationships with influential business organizations, associations, and elected officials strategically. A little lighter news. Uh, I have to go home and see this because I haven't seen this, but fans of Max's uh, Our Flag Means Death. Have you guys seen no, this? No, it's a good Our show. Flag Means Death have taken to the internet en masse to demand that the streamer save the beloved Pirate comedy, arg, hysterical Keith, popcorn, and we got to watch this. Right, watch to the dismay it. of the show's right. loyal and queer cult following, who resonated with the central romance between gentleman pirate Steed Bonet, am I saying that uh -huh. right? Uh, and Edward Blackbeard Teach. Max announced last week the series had officially been canceled after two seasons. They didn't cite a reason. A spokesman thanked the dedicated fans. Given that both seasons attracted widespread critical acclaim, fans were understandably devastated to see the show's queer pirate crew stories cut short. And they've already received 53,000 signatures to bring it back. Yes, maybe that will do it. This is also uplifting. I gotta dig deep here, people. Sir Elton John became the 19th EGOT. person for an EGOT. Nice. He won an Emmy. For did you guys see this? The farewell from Dodger Stadium tour. No, I didn't. It was no. good. Check yeah, it out. I yeah, it. it was on Disney Plus. But if you know somebody, you can steal their password. Whoops, I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> you can go um, to their house and watch it. You can go to their house and watch it. That's what I meant to say. He's won two Oscars. He's won a Tony and of course five Grammys. So that's pretty cool. And apparently he wasn't there. Somebody woke him up in the middle of the night to tell him. <laughs> no, apparently no, he screamed like a girl or something. Of course. No, it his husband. His husband, his husband. accepted the award. Oh, okay. And, and then called, called him, him and he was like. Him up and <laughs> yeah. Was it live on TV that he woke no, up? No, it, it oh, happened anyway. backstage. That was funny. Okay, but I think I think there were some news outlets that caught yeah. it. That it, it said it says in the notes that he woke up and screamed. Uh, what else? The Massachusetts State Senate unanimously passed a bill Thursday to repeal several archaic criminal laws that were still on the books, including the state sodomy law. That is amazing that that would still be on the books when they Some have marriage. Have like Massachusetts, what? We, we never had one. Yeah. Uh, and then there was also a law that critics have dubbed the walking while trans law. Is that like driving while walking black? Walking while <laughs> trans <laughs> is, is that like driving while black when you get pulled over? Yes, it is. Uh, I'm just really happy that it passed, and I hope it will pass seamlessly, said Tanya yeah. Newsland, the executive director of Mass what does it Equality. Mean? Despite long being considered a leader in passing progressive legislation for LGBTQ rights, Massachusetts is one of 12 states that still have laws banning gay sex in its criminal statutes.
This criminalizes the abominable, detestable crime against nature and unnatural and lascivious acts of another person. See, I, that it's for the most it. part, straight men that I've dated yeah. are the only ones who mm, <laughs> ever say, it's brought only it up. If you don't so, do it properly, that's right. There we are. Uh, Wednesday, the Florida Board of State Board of Education implemented strict regulations uh -huh. against the use of public funds for diversity, equity, and inclusion pro uh, programs. This made my head explode. They replaced the course, wait for it, Principles of Sociology. They said that was too inflammatory. Principles With a of sociology. comprehensive general education core course in American history. Because Which that's won't so be real American history, because they've cut no, up. No, but also teach. diversity, equity, and inclusion. No, out the window. They said that higher education has to return to its essential foundations of academic integrity in the pursuit of knowledge instead of being corrupted <laughs> by destructive ideologies. And we will so not confused. spend taxpayers' monies to support DEI and radical indoctrination that promotes division in our society. Several hundred LGBTQ rights activists gathered to, to dis voice their displeasure. All right, uh, also Equality Florida has come out and said they will not be scared out of their state. They will, you will not make laws to remove me or my dreams. I was raised on an America that believed that freedom will ring, said the Angelique Godwin coordinator for trans-related events. We are not pawns in your political game. We are people with the right to dignity, equality, and a life free from constant slander and discrimination. <clears throat> Participants mocked Governor DeSantis, of course they did, second place showing in the we caucus. Read the numbers, they said. <laughs> Your policies don't work in America, they don't work in Florida. We don't like them either. Banning books doesn't ban LGBTQ people, and it will not eliminate them. Restricting access to black, queer, and other diverse media does nothing to protect our children. It actually harms them. A child should not have to feel fear from their parents because of who they are. A Connecticut town council voted to ban the rainbow LGBTQ pride flag. They voted in a meeting to ban all flags except for the US flag, the Connecticut state flag, and military flags. Somebody on the council said the real reason you're doing this is that you are, um, you know, homophobes. Uh, but this, you'll like this, Keith. Tom Tyler, interim town attorney, claimed that if the pride flag was allowed, ISIS could come in and demand Absolutely. that we fly their flag. Because that's going to happen, because the terrorists always show up with their homemade flag and ask him to run it up on the rainbow flag, flag, flag in the back of their shirt. But, th but this is the argument that the conservative right is using to ban the flags they really don't like. It's if we allow yeah, this, we'll then you have everything. to allow all these that others. So we're just BS. limiting it to. They're just angry because we've banned the Confederate flag. Yes, that's right. My final story, which uh, I hope, tell me if I can do this, Keith. Uh, it's a TikTok video, which I would love to we send the link to. How long to. is it? It's like a minute or Okay. Something. Yeah, it's TikTok. But I'm going to give no, you the no, no. I'm going to give you the content. I think it's like a minute 37 okay. seconds or something. If we don't have time, we don't have time. Um, but anyway, so the video I'll just I'll tell you about it. Is a little girl. She's about four years old, and she comes up to her mom and says, "You're gay." And the mom says, "Oh, honey, unfortunately, I'm not gay." Which right out of the gate, I started laughing because the mom I'm said, not gay. "Unfortunately, I'm not gay. I'm married to your dad, and he's a boy." And and the kid gets pissed. <laughs> She starts what? like, she, oh she, yeah, and she pouts and she says, well, <laughs> I guess I'm not gay. This little kid. And the mom says, well, you might be gay. <laughs> and the kid says, what? she's all disappointed. And the mom says, we love gay people and you're just too little. You might be gay, but you might be straight. And honey, that's okay. And it doesn't matter. It really oh. doesn't matter who you love. And do you know why? And the kid says, because love is love. Oh. Right? That's sweet. And the mom says, as long as you're happy and safe, it doesn't matter who you love, honey. And, and, the, and the kid, you know, wanders it's up again, on. is happy again. Okay. I, I loved that. I was hoping the mother was going to say, I'm not gay, I'm lesbian. Yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. Okay, but moving on yeah. to oh, our... Oh, I can't see, though, now that we're moving on. Yeah. So... so who's going to give us new language? Yeah, yeah new language. I love I new language. have a couple of stories, so we may have no, time for that language. TikTok. There we go. So I was very excited to see on Sunday morning uh, on CBS oh. this weekend that retired Bishop Gene Robinson was just interviewed because in 
November of this past year, we just hit the 20th anniversary of his celebrating his consecration as the first out gay Episcopalian bishop. So very excited about that. He is got to be one of the sweetest people. And in the coming months, um, he will be, you know, he's celebrating in different places about this. He's been interviewed in a few places. And it, it's, there's already been two events. So the Sewanee uh, of the University of the South, they rece he received an undergraduate degree in American Studies and History there. And so they awarded him an honorary doctorate. And uh, they had a whole anniversary celebration. And an interview in early October happened with the Diocese of New Hampshire and the Episcopalian group. So they said to recognize how brave and courageous uh, the Diocese of New Hampshire and the Episcopal Church as a whole were, because it's hard to remember how controversial this was in 2003. Um, and he actually got death threats almost immediately. And it was interesting to hear that the Vermont State Police called him almost immediately the day of or after to say, we've received a death threat for you. We want you to be aware mm. um, and trying to let him know. So there, there's a really sweet story on, on um, Sunday morning if you want to watch it. And it's just pretty amazing to think that he opened up the door for people and they've been telling him, you know, you're going to be sainted. And he's like, oh my gosh, please no. You know, like, no, I am the least saintly person ever. But he's done so many that, things. But that's why he should that's be. Why that's why he right. should. And like, is he, he still practicing? I mean, is he no. still? He's retired Oh, now. he's retired. Yeah. So okay. he's retired, but, um, you know, he is doing some good works, of course. Mm -hmm. They did talk a little bit about the fact that he was approached by Matthew Shepard's family, mm. and they put Matthew, Matthew Shepard's ashes in the special spot in the church where mm. you know he can never be desecrated because oh. they were worried about even burying his wow. ashes. This is at the cathedral, the cathedral. in Washington, D.C. Yeah, the in D.C. Yeah, mm. I don't have the name of it. Mm. That's why I was kind of vamping. But mm. yes, so that's pretty amazing. Mm. Um, I, I love it. So in a new, in, in my usual style, here's the new term that I came across recently. Yes. And I will tell you briefly the background, which was I was ruminating on why everyone's, this is what I do often, why everyone only uses the Kinsey scale to talk about queerness. The Kinsey scale, which was uh, Alfred Kinsey and yeah. Ward L. Pomeroy. So it was like numbers, right? There was like ranking, right? It came up like, with a ranking yeah. for sexuality, zero yeah. to six if you're sort straight or gay. Sort of this continuum, gay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Klein scale is never mentioned in it. And it was kind of like, why is it never mentioned? Robert Klein who came up with a later grid, which was multidimensional, um, his client, he, say, he calls it the KSOG, uh, in the 78 book, uh, The Bisexual Option, talked about sexuality over time and how it can change and added more dimension to uh, whether you're amorous toward or like people, uh, not just sexuality, right? All these attractions. And then I went to this scale and I said, oh my God. You went down a rabbit hole. Also, the Klein scale needs updating now because I began to read it and it says, are you attracted to men or women? Do you like men or women? Men or women? So it has none of the updates for really all of our thinking that has evolved over gender. And I thought, okay, well, so we need a Kim Ward scale, apparently. I'm going to make that. <clears throat> But um, in you the, need to interview people. In, I'm going to have to do a lot of interviews. But um, in the interim of, of going down that rabbit hole, I found a lovely story by Emma Flint uh, with the term abrosexual. Have you ever heard the term? No, but we were talking last time I was here about gray sexual. And gray sexual, we which all... is actually how I identify. OK. So I'm a bi, a, I bi grace. Was... I call myself bi grace, bi grace, bisexual, gray sexual. You didn't know. Right? I didn't know. I thought it was a, like old people. Old people sexual. But it, but it wasn't. So, so if you were to guess abrosexual. Abro. Um, what it means oh, is, abro. and I'm going to sort of abro. look, look abro through cadabro. my story. Abrocadabra. So mm. those who don't know what it is, in layperson terms, it simply means when someone's sexual identity fluctuates and changes, which is how oh. I got down that rabbit hole. Now, for some people, it could fluctuate over a short period of time. Or a long over the of night. Time. <laughs> yeah, well, it could, it could, I'm, right? I'm, I'm thinking and of Holly Near. Holly Near, absolutely. Yeah. And the point is that 
oftentimes people are told, and this woman who wrote the article, when she came out as abro sexuality, people were saying, just make up your mind, you're confused, that why was are you me. always changing? That was, that was me in the 80s. And that happens <laughs> when you're bisexual as well, it's, right? That's me now. People uh, go, what, you were married to a man? TMI. TMI. <laughs> Keith is like, not me. You know, what? It was clear. So I thought it was very interesting to have a term that talks about the fact that sexuality can fluctuate and that that is okay. Well, and how really, does that fit into that's really our validating paradigm? Well, because all this, all the literature out there is so, as you said, so dated. Well, I was going to say that the recent panels that I've been invited to speak on for our youth, our message is don't try to put a label on yourself. Yeah, sure. And basically this theory of Things will change over your There's lifetime. A continuum. There are emotional, there are physical, there are spiritual relationships. Yeah. They all have different dimensions, different compositions, different complexities. Don't, it's okay. Don't don't box yourself. But if, Al allow yeah, that to happen. If you talk to young people like my daughter, who's in her twenties, they don't use any of like, those I, terms. I don't need a label. Well, they don't use labels at all. They get frustrated they when go. you say lesbian or gay or even mm -hmm. some well, of the pansexual, whatever. They're just like. We're just who we are. We're well, who we are. See, we that's the people. And, yeah. Well, that's the extension of that initial conversation yeah. is we keep coming up with all of these different terms. To box. So we, well, no, so we can finally get to the point where... We don't need terms at all. <laughs> Bingo. That's the key. Right. And so we're not using goal. any of them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I love and that. so I loved coming up with someone who said, look, so. I never knew what was going on with me until I came up, oh, abrosexual. And, you know... Hmm. Who knows? But now you said abro gay, so you're that's multi dimensional. Abro gay, I said yeah. bi grace. Bi, bi, bi grace. Bisexual, gray, gotcha. asexual. Okay. It's very complicated. Okay. Look, look. All right. Okay. Read We're going to have book. to read you, the book Ace. Read the book Ace. Uh, by Joan we, Chen. Joan Chen? A. Joan Chen's an actor. It's a different Chen. But um, <laughs> somebody Chen. Ace. A C E. Well, A C E. On one of the last okay. shows, that right. what I had reported on was a term being used by people doing research where. It is not the gender to which you're attracted, it's the relationship, mm -hmm. and that you only have an erotic response based upon the relationship. I mean, that's, that's what, it's what it's people have been totally saying for years. It's bingo. not about the... Yeah. But, but for some people, not about the, some people can the say, oh my God, look at that hot person, whew, and some people don't have that reaction. It, it has to be the... The okay. emotional connection. There you go. That is all I have. Oh, okay. So, oh. It's good that we well, got to chat a little. Yeah, no. We'll well, and, and we, we're going to have more time to more chat. More time for videos. Okay, I, or we could create our... Or we could just uh, channel Anne and read well, some... <laughs> I'm going to start the... I'm going to start with Maine. Okay. Maine. Because Maine has introduced a bill, ALD, which is Legislative Directory, 1735. And the intent of this is to make Maine a transgender sanctuary state. Mm. It is putting in place all of the things that would allow health care for transgender youth. Mm. That if you are if you are fleeing because of the repressive statutes, policies in your state, you are safe in Maine if they issue a warrant. We're not going to honor it. Ooh. We are not send, sharing any of our information with wherever it is you came from. So, so if you're coming so from Texas and they said, "Oh, we want these health records," does that apply like, for abortion too? Like, well, I was going to say it's like the <laughs> trans. Is there some medical uh, underground railroad <laughs> yeah. that we have to do but, this? But of course, the right wing hmm. is pushing back, saying, "Oh my God, this will become it. a haven." No, no, we'll have no. a bunch you're, of trans people. No, you're going in the wrong direction. <laughs> I want you to think about how the alt-right creates an emotional fear-based response versus a thoughtful intellectual response. I'm going to be in so much trouble for that one, but it's true. they're promoting this. They're trying to do this bill so they can snatch your children. Because a provision in this bill would allow the court to take custody of the child, if need be. I'm 16, 17 years old. Yeah. I am fleeing because my parents and my state will not allow me to receive gender-affirming care that I need. Mm -hmm. So I'm in Maine. Sure. They're trying to get me back. Maine can step in and say, 
if, if the youth can prove that they would be subject to abuse or neglect, the state of Vermont will take custody. State Maine. 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 State of Maine. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, okay. no. Hold, hold on to that thought, though. Yes. The state of Maine so, will take custody. So the alt-right thinks that, that they're going to use this to steal their straight children? and. We're, we're, <laughs> Well, they think that steal our children and make, allow them to be trans. Really. Yeah, that's, what, that's, I mean. that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Like steal our the, it's the, kids it's, that are actually it's, trans right. that are right. trying to flee their it's the home. Emotional because, response. And yeah. this has got a really good chance of being enacted. <clears throat> it Damn. would make Maine the fifteenth state to impose to to pass such legislation. Vermont, like a we, safe harbor kind of thing is what we're doing. Vermont, talking. we did it when we were doing the constitutional amendment on reproductive abortion. liberty. Yeah, that's right. We did the bill, and mm -hmm. it included the abortion mm -hmm. rights. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen where this bill does. Okay. Is there Maine is just focusing mm -hmm. on the transgender huge, aspect. Though. Is there a worry that, the, but, that something at the national level will try to undermine the state's... Uh, I, Shouldn't there be? Uh, <laughs> I mean, yes, that was kind of a time, rhetorical yeah, question. Say, no answer point, isn't, isn't anybody worried? <laughs> yes. Well, no, at this point yes. in time, whatever the U.S. House passes, the U.S. Senate is not going to go along with, and the current administration would veto, so. Yeah. But and? It, it's, it's similar to Prop 5, what Prop 5 meant to do when it started, which is let's protect this state before anything Bingo. Problematic so, can happen. So we've got really. things in place. That's huge. Okay, so the last show I reported that there were things in the legislature that I was watching that I had concerns about. And one of them was uh, the House Education Committee was going to hear from legal counsel about the Alliance Defending Freedom suit on behalf of the Mid Vermont Christian Academy. And mm -hmm. it is as bad as I had thought. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a 71-page document. Please don't put yourself through reading it because how they open is that this civil rights action seeks to protect a Christian school and its students and parents from unconstitutional religious discrimination and hostility. They, it, throughout their 71 pages, state that Vermont is created a hostile environment against them and that we are promoting this agenda and that the state of Vermont has adopted its own orthodoxy on human sexuality and gender. Simply put, the state believes sex is mutable and biological differences do not matter. The state is entitled to its own views, but it is not entitled, nor is it constitutional. Hold that in mind to force private religious schools across the state to follow that orthodoxy as a condition to participating in Vermont's tuitioning program and the state's athletic association. The backdrop to this is there was a case that came out of Maine called the Markin decision that the US Supreme Court said, if you are allowing public, tui it, public tuition you have to give an even playing field to all schools, public, private, religious. What Vermont has tried to do is to say, OK, if you're an independent, private, or religious school, you are eligible to be designated to receive state funds if you agreed to abide by Vermont state statutes are non-discrimination statutes, public accommodation. And in, in their summation, where they don't say this is the relief we are seeking, they call it their prayer for relief. Well, they want the court to rule that the state of Vermont can, in fact, not do that, that it is their constitutional right of freedom of speech freedom of religion, and you cannot impose this upon them. And they have the right to decide who they hire, who they educate, and who is eligible for their support. I think that's ongoing. all true as long as you don't want state funding. Like, you can do whatever Correct. you want as a religious institution. But if you want taxpayer and town and state funded money, you have to follow the rules, that's bullshit. What the Alliance Defending Freedom is saying that that argument you just made is unconstitutional. Well, here I it, want to get back to constitutional, though, 
because doesn't our constitution separate church and separate state? church and state? For, Vermont had a ruling that upheld that. The Markin decision overturned that. The Markin decision. The Markin, but that was in Maine. No, no, no. The Markin decision. Federal. It was, was, it was U, a, okay. Sorry. The Federal. U.S. Supreme Court. I followed. I'm there. When did but that were, come down? Uh, two but, years ago. I don't know. So there's the current. It's, it's, been a single recent. Supreme Court no, decision the, made since this recent change in that makeup that I have agreed with. The, the, I was going to say the conservative court. Yeah, there mm -hmm, we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the other thing that I was looking at is what did the Principals Association and the Board of Education say? These are our priorities. I was pleased slightly disappointed. All of them said, this type of action, we have to put in place legislative protections that would protect our students and ensure that we have a non-discrimination yeah. education system that meets all of the needs. Everybody gets to play. Yeah. Everybody is participating. Everyone's held accountable. And this was from the Vermont NEA. The Vermont NEA believes that all matters of public policy must be built upon in services of creating equity for all Vermonters, regardless of their race, ethnicity, national origin, religion, gender, or sexual orientation. Systems of oppression exist in all areas of our social, economic, and governmental structures. They have been created over time and will take intentional work to dismantle and correct. To that end, it is our intention to work in strategic solidarity with those impacted to advance public policy matters that make Vermont and our communities inclusive and empowering to all citizens. And basically, that philosophy is echoed in everyone's statement. The one piece that I was hoping for and I didn't see was going back and working on harassment and bullying. Right, which is getting lost in the shuffle. Bingo. But, but the Senate is looking at Act 1, which was we passed several years ago, um, ethnic social studies standards. And what the Board of Education and other people have said is there's some lack of clarity in the language. Could you please be very clear about what your intent is? What do you want us to do? Who do you want us to include? And some of this has to do with a choice of using language other th of either underrepresented communities or disenfranchised communities and communities that have endured genocide. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there, there needs to be something worked out there. There was that what, case, though, Keith, though, when I was here last time, that that school was being sued and that went to the Supreme Court and the EEOC stepped in and said that the school was at fault for not protecting the rights of that kid that was being harassed and bullied. I want to say it was up somewhere near like Fairfax or up that way. Fairfax or Chanelbans, yeah. And up that way. And the, they, at the Vermont, I thought, Supreme Court ruled that the, the school did, in fact, violate the rights of those kids. And they were going to uphold that. But, but, but that's not the problem. The problem is what the standard is for what constitutes harassment uh, and bullying. OK, you did clarified. not meet the current but that doesn't go far enough, is what you're saying. And part of the reason it doesn't go far enough is it's only counted, and that case only made it to the US Supreme Court, is if they have met the standard or there's some action that's been taken. Mm. If you are reporting harassment and they don't think it meets the standards, it doesn't show up on anybody's radar, and it doesn't show up as re a reported incident. Mm. Right. So mm -hmm. that's what we're looking at. Yeah. OK, now we are starting to run out of time. <laughs> no. We can what, always talk about it. <laughs> well, no, the, I want to report on the first bill that passed the Vermont House was H-27. And this was the bill about expanding domestic violence for coercive actions. Huge. And it passed on 106 to 31 wow. to 13 vote. No, hold that wow yet. 
31 people opposed it. All Republicans. That's messed up. Like, how do you, I'm, entire, I'm for violence. <laughs> the entire Republican caucus that was in the chamber that day voted against it. And nobody would comment on why. I went and read the language, and this is the last paragraph that what would be included as you are deserving of protection, controlling the reproductive autonomy of the plaintiffs through force, threat of force, or intimidation, including placing unreasonable pressure on the plaintiff to become pregnant, deliberately in fear, interfering with the plaintiff's contraceptive use, or access to reproductive information or using coercive tactics to control or attempt to control pregnancy outcomes. I think we have our answer. I'm for coercing women. Yeah. 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 Here we go. OK, House General is taking up H What's that term? Three, <laughs> H363, <laughs> discrimination based on certain hairstyles. This is what's called the Crown Act. And there are 20 states that have already enacted it. And it would prohibit discrimination based on hair types and styles associated with a particular race. And going to one of the stories that you said, House Government Ops is going to be talking about H806, a prohibition of book bans by public and school libraries. The General Assembly further declares it be the policy of the state to protect the freedom of libraries and library systems to acquire materials for the exchange of ideas and cultural growth of the community and to be protected against attempts to ban, remove, or otherwise restrict access to books or other materials. How about the drag queens? Can they come in and read the books? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and then Senate Education is going to again is going to be working on language for how do you qualify to become an independent school under Vermont statute so that they're so then they entitled mm -hmm. to tuition money. I would expect that whatever gets passed, Alliance to Defending Freedom is going to challenge it in court and we're going to find ourselves appealed all the way to the US Supreme Court level. So hmm. As we dwindle down with our time, and thank you for being here. Thanks for having yeah, me. Thanks for having and, us. And, hey, yeah. and, and, and so, you're on the list to come back. This is the first time we've subbed together. Together, yeah. yeah. We'll be waiting for your comments. Together yes, again. I'm sure for we'll get the some. First time. I, uh, the feedback, please. Yeah. <laughs> Keep those cards and letters coming, coming. in. <laughs> so, and again, the trivia question, they were so close. Oh. So close. So close. Because one of the comments that may have been made by the keynote speaker, mm. Keith St. John, was looking out at this auditorium filled with people and said, this looks like a really white group of people. Vermont isn't really that white. To which the people in the audience said, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. yes, we are. Yes. And that should have been the hint. Keith St. John was the first openly gay African American public official elected in the US. And it, he was elected in 1989 mm. to the Albany, New York Common Council. What was more interesting when I was reviewing the article is his keynote focused on the right wing movement has taken the lead in organizing against the most fundamental principles of democracy, equal protection, equal participation, and self-determination. Back in 89, he saw it coming. Does that sound kind mm. of familiar? So with that, <laughs> as Linda would say, we all need to remember to resist. resist.